currently fighting for my life right now. I'm sprawled out his legs. I almost had a heart attack. Lord Jesus Christ, I can't. I can't. What was the point of even putting this on? Does it look worse or does it look better? Why don't you do get ready with me deep appointments anymore? You musty, crusty, dusty bitch. Welcome back to the vlog. I was gonna say good morning, but I'm currently fighting for my life right now. <laughs> like, jokingly, but in all seriousness, the spiders in this house. Okay, I'm about to show y'all. Also, don't pick at your face, girl. Because now it looks like I got bopped in my head like it's a whole bruise right here from picking at the last two days but other than that my skin's doing so good i'm just bam we're not gonna get talk about it okay I'm just gonna anyways i plan on you know good morning coming up open up i literally pull in my garage it's not even a tarantula something bigger than a tarantula it's just sitting on these little crates that we have in the garage just chilling and I'm like, first of all, I already killed your son or daughter this morning inside the house, a little smaller one. Then I'm going to show y'all because y'all probably think I'm like tripping over a little. No, I wasn't being dramatic. I'm not being dramatic. That's not even the biggest one I've seen. OK, that's not even the biggest one I've seen. That's the problem. That's the problem. Are we zoomed in? Yeah, a little bit. So just. Anyways, uh, now I'm scared. Y'all see me flinching? Every time I look down and I see something, I jump. Because I'm just like, I'm scared. <laughs> but anyways, all right, let's get back into it. Welcome back to a vlog. Today is Thursday. Y'all know I've been like trying to cut the vlogs and have me. We gonna see. Today is Thursday. I took a little break yesterday. Just caught up on my little editing and whatnot. I went back to that vegan place that I ate at in the last vlog and got the Philly cheese. It was all right. It wasn't as good as the chicken sandwich. It wasn't bad, but you know, it was it was, it, it was cool. I just don't like the bread they put it on per se because it's like wheat bread. It would slap on some Italian bread or just like some other type of bread. But anyways, today we have a couple of things on the agenda. We're going to the movies at 11.15. So I actually need to like speed up a little bit because right now it's already going to be nine o'clock. That spider took up about 20 minutes. I was trying to kill it with this spray. So I was like, psh, 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 psh. and it would it would not die so I'm not parking in the garage anymore and um yeah that's just that on that we got a little try on haul that we need to do for Halara because they're sponsoring today's video some of these stuff I've already tried on so I already know that I like their stuff and then some of them I haven't tried on yet so we're gonna get like first impression together I do have a discount code for you guys and I'll leave it on the screen right here so you guys can check them out if you're interested they have a lot of athleisure wear so these are the items that we've got um the biker shorts i'm gonna put them on first because i already know that i really really like these i've worn these like a couple of times they got like the ruching in the booty right here and then the material these are just so nice they're like really soft i'm gonna put the name of the, like the materials on here because y'all know i'm not good at the specifics but whatever the blend is is really nice it's stretchy but it's not see-through and it's also like what is the word I was going to say? It's like durable. You know what I mean? It's like not, it's like a good material. Let's throw these on really quickly. Here is the first, it's not a set, like these are not matching. You could get this top in the black, I believe though, but these are super duper cute. They've got the little like wrench right here in the back and then the material of the top is really, really soft. It's also got like the built-in padding so you don't have to wear a bra with it. I think this is be like a cute little like, just walking like from going on like a hot mom walk or something, you know what I'm saying? That's what the vibes. I just love the material. This is just really soft. So this is the first two things. Can't get over the booty. Here's another version of their shorts. I don't know if these are like my favorite. Um, they're a little bit more girly. I feel like they're a little bit more dressy, which is a little bit out of my comfort zone. Um, so, yeah. The material on them is still nice. But yeah, it's got like, it's kind of like got like a dainty, like flirty, cute. So if that's like your vibe and style, it's cute. That's not necessarily my style. 
You know what I'm saying? But it's cute. Then they also have these shorts, which I love the material of them because they're super lightweight and then they're also lined. And then this is kind of like a looser material. It has a little pocket right here, which is like mad convenient. These are like the perfect long shorts because they're like, you know, still appropriate because they've got the, you know, lining here. So you gotta worry about your booty coming out. And then, of course, I love a good thick waistband. Yeah, I really like these too. I've actually never tried these on before, but I... I really like these. I actually really like these. Okay. This is the same shorts as the black one with the same top that I had on in the gray, but this is in the white. This is super cute and comfy, you guys. So it's the same thing. It's got the little pockets right here. This material is so nice. I'm definitely wearing this. I could see myself having my little sneakers, a little hat. And I'm about to start going on walks. Like this just made me motivated to go on walks. Cause like even my like legs don't look bad in this. Y'all know I got cellulite on the back of my legs, but this is actually really cute. And it looks nice and it's flattering. It's got the big waistband. Oh yeah, I like this a lot. What do y'all think? We like, we like, I like. I'll probably end up actually getting a couple more pairs of these shorts. Y'all know if I like one thing, I would just get it in like all the neutral colors and then that's what I'll start wearing. So I definitely could see myself wearing these on walks, especially because it's so hot in the summer. I don't really like wearing leggings and stuff, but I don't have any, sh like I, y'all never see me wear shorts. Like sometimes I wear biker shorts, but I'll never just wear shorts. And so I feel like these are actually like perfect for like my lifestyle as far as like needing to throw something on, going on a walk, going to the park, being around the kids, so. I'm really obsessed with this little pocket right here. That is so cute. Okay, that's it for the try on haul. If you guys are interested in any other pieces, I will have my code on the screen as well as a link in my description box as well for you guys to shop. So make sure you check out Halara, girl. This is cute. Body shape like a cool bottle. Walk with a waddle. I decided I'm going to keep this on because this is cute. And it's literally, it's literally so comfortable. So yeah. All right, we got a couple of Amazon packages I was going to open with you guys too. And then I'm going to get to work and then I'm going to come back and we're going to do, I was thinking about attempting to do like a little get ready with me to go to the movies because I want to try to do something else like I, my hair. I was complaining about it in the last vlog. I still ain't got around to doing it yet because what did I do yesterday night? I was just chilling like all Aaron's cousins and mom and everybody was over here yesterday and we were hanging out with the kids and we went to the little vegan spot. We was watching TV. Um, his brother hung up Carter's TV in his room, so his room's all, you know, well, it's not all done, but he got his TV up, so he's excited about that. But yeah, anyways, we're gonna get to the hair tonight. I'm gonna do my hair tonight, I'm, I'm gonna do it with y'all. Boom, pow! Ooh, this is gonna come in super handy. I don't know. I'm interested to see how it works. But basically, I got these blackout things for the windows for the kids because ooh, it only came with one. I thought it was something different. But anyways, I just want to put this on the boys' windows at nighttime because, like, they go to sleep before the sun is down. The sun doesn't go down until, like, 9 p.m. So I got these little blackout things that you hang on the window. So... I'm gonna try to put that up. I need, really I only need that one. Cause I really just need it for like Judah's room and Carson's room. And then it comes with these little sticky adhesives that you can put like little gel things. So you just use these to stick it on the window. And that'll just be our temporary fix until we get, oh my God, it's another spider y'all. See, I can't, I can't. I can't. And then they be faking dead. Like I think they're dying because of the pest control. Like they come, like they'll get in the house or wherever they're hiding at in the house and they come out and then like sometimes I'll wake up and they'll be dead. But then the other day, one was all shriveled up and he was like acting dead. I went to sweep it up and it just sprawled out his legs. I almost had a heart attack. Lord Jesus Christ, I can't. I can't. I can't think of it And now there's another one. I'm like, ugh. Unless this one moved because it wasn't dead. Nope, that one's still right there. And see, that one is new because that one wasn't there this morning. I do. I, I literally, they're huge. They're flipping huge. 
Um, and I don't listen. I'd be telling Carter, you gotta sweep them up. I can't. Okay, I'm about to spray it because I'm gonna. It's, it's ooh. It's like they look dead, but they don't be dead. Yes, yeah, like oh my gosh, I gotta take a video of this because y'all don't. Nobody believes me. It's like y'all don't know. And then I'm so curious. Like I'm so curious where they're coming from because they are always right here in the dining room or the kitchen. Do you see how it's just opening up? It's blurry. See the camera is trying to test me. Lord, look at it. Look at it. Oh my God, this one is not dying. Look at it. It's just still just wiggling around, but I am going to shit bricks. What and it's it's all the same type of spider. Great. Now my floor is soaking wet in this, and I need to order more because this is almost out. And clearly, this is my only defense mechanism. I'm sorry, they gotta go. It's good. Listen, I don't know where they could be coming from. Like. The, there's weather ships on all the doors. The windows aren't open. Where are they coming from? How are they getting in the house? Somebody please enlighten me. Let's lay, they laid eggs in the house and now all the, the eggs are hatching or what? I don't know. I'm not mentally strong enough for this. I think it's dead now. It has moved. But do you see how they be faking dead? That is really playing with my emotions. I'm like, cause I know they be coming out at night. That's why I see them when I wake up in the morning, they be dead or fake dead or dying, whatever the fuck they're doing. It's really pissing me off. You know what I'm gonna start doing? I'm gonna start running my robot vacuum at like 4 a.m. or like 5 a.m. instead of I usually run that. <laughs> Sorry, my face looks so disgusting. I'm just looking at it, but I'm gonna start running my vacuum at like 4 a.m. and then hopefully the vacuum can like chase them down and suck them up. You know what I'm saying? Just the robot vacuum because it self empties too, so I don't have to worry about emptying it out. So I don't never have to see them. And I think that's best for everybody. Boom, boom, boom. Random. Well, not random, but Carter started back football. I think I told y'all that. He needed some cleats, so I got him some ones off Amazon just for practice. I actually took measurements of their feet this morning. I want a shoe shop for them, but it's so hard because like I know their shoe sizes, but they wear different sizes in a lot of shoes, if that makes sense. Like they can wear one size croc and one size tennis shoe. So I traced their feet this morning on this piece of paper, and I'm gonna take it with me to the store whenever I go shoe shopping for them, in case they're not with me. Anyways, yeah, I got some little red Under Armour. Their colors of their team is like blue, red, white. So these are going to be his practice cleats. And then I'm going to try to find him some more. I got to get Carson some cleats now because he also decided he was playing football, playing football this year. I don't know if I told y'all or not, but we got out there to practice. And he was like, I want to play. So I was like, there's a kid way smaller than him on the team. So I was like, my son can definitely play. Let's see. Ooh, these are heavy. I've been waiting for these to come in. For so long I don't know why my Amazon order got like delayed and it had all my kitchen stuff in it but I got some more gold spoons and forks because the last set that I had from when we moved to our last place y'all know the forks just be somehow jumping in the trash so I got these spoons and forks I'll show you all the whole set when I open it up but I'm gonna put them through the dishwasher I don't know what this is my cups came with straws. That was so nice. I had to order some more cups too because like all of my glass cups pretty much have gotten broken in the past year since I've had them, like when we moved last year. So I ordered some new cups off of Amazon. I'm probably gonna get some more. Oh yeah, cause these are tiny, but I wanted some like unique glasses. I kind of already had some. And so I wanted to get like different ones. I got the ripped ones. These are like way smaller than I thought they were gonna be though. But they came in a pack of four. Everything right here I'm gonna put in the dishwasher. I got some dividers for my silverware cause I don't have anything to 
to like separate all of the sandwiches. this I got clear instead of wood because I just felt like it would probably look better and then it's got these two sides right here so you can like you can't really extend it out that far but you can make it a little bit bigger than it was that's dangerous okay I'm gonna put this in the drawer and then the silverware, I might have to get another one of these, but I also got some other dividers that are also in the box. So I'm gonna show you guys. Oh no, mommy, it's hell. Oh my god. It's just dead spiders all over the damn house. Can y'all see that? I feel like y'all can't really see that well. It's clear, so it's got the little expandable drawers. See, now I don't know what I'm gonna do because now I got those new silverware, so it's like, where am I gonna put the new silverware? I'll probably put all the knives over here and then put the other spoons and forks over here. And I got these, which they're basically, I was gonna put, I don't know if they're gonna be long enough. I was gonna use, okay, maybe these to separate this stuff. Like my cooking room. But I don't know. Oh, they do come with little stickers. Like so you gotta put the little stickers on. I don't know if I like that or not, though. I feel like that's kind of unnecessary. Like, I don't know if I like that, honestly. Hmm. Like, what looks better? I mean, obviously, they're not laid out perfectly, but do you really think I need little dividers? in between every utensil like i honestly don't think so i'm just gonna leave them for now i might use these for the kids dressers in their room okay that is everything that i got for the most part in those little boxes so i'm gonna put the silverware in the dishwasher i'm really hungry but I also don't have an appetite from seeing those spiders, but my stomach is growling, so I don't know what I'm about to do. Mmm, probably drink me some water. I didn't want to eat just yet because I still need to take the colon broom. You're supposed to do that 30 minutes before. And so I've been trying to stay consistent doing that in the morning because if you get any product and you don't use it consistently, you can just forget about seeing the benefits of it. So I'm actually trying to be consistent with it. And you're supposed to take it 30 minutes before you eat. So I'm trying to like, I'm going to take it really fast or drink it really fast and then try to eat here in about 30 minutes. But I got to go, bro. I got to get this work done and turn it in really fast. And then I'm gonna come back when we get ready for the movies. I don't really know if we're actually gonna get ready or not because honestly, I don't know what I can do. I don't possibly know what I can do with my hair right now. But I thought it would be cute to do a cute little get ready with me moment, but this might be the best we're getting. This might be the best we're getting. And then I'm probably just gonna honestly put on sweatpants or something because you know, it'd be cold in the movies. I was gonna ask my brother and his girlfriend if they wanted to go, but then I was like, if I invite them and they can't have somebody keep their baby and then they don't wanna go, would that be rude or should I just ask anyways? Cause I'm going to the movies with, uh, it's me, Aaron's brother, his cousin, his girlfriend, and then his other brother. So we're all just going to see Joyride, which I'm super excited for. Cause I haven't been to the movies in so very long. Oh, actually, let me go sit down too. Cause I did not do my Bible time today. Also, can we just talk about it? Let's get into it for a second. I want everybody to understand that I am not trying to model as far as being the perfect Christian. I just share my what I'm going through, my like spiritual journey with you guys because it's something that I'm 
going through in my life right now but I also don't think that I'm a perfect I'm not the perfect example of like what a Christian should look like I still have a lot of you know I still have a long way to go okay but anyways yeah I just wanted to make that clear because I also don't like that stigma that's why people don't like church people or just don't like Christians in general because they don't do everything they're supposed to do or you, you you get what I'm saying you get what I'm saying I mean that was my perspective especially when I was younger so it took a lot like it took me growing to this age to separate the people from the religion like people are not perfect and you know everybody is not is not gonna be perfect but that doesn't mean I you know they can't be Christian and, and yeah anyways it's just a big debate we me and my mom's been talking that about that a lot about just like going to church and then like being turned off by church because of the people who are in church and i used to kind of be like that but now i'm more so just like i'm going to church for me and i'm not worried about what everybody else is doing so anyways yeah i just feel like i had to give a disclaimer because i've been seeing a lot of that lately i'm like i never said i was perfect i never said i was perfect okay i'm working i don't even want to sit at the dining room table I'm about to run the vacuum and see if it can pick up the spiders. Lord have mercy. I'm just gonna say, I'm traumatized by every inch of this. Surprise! <laughs> ah! Okay. What is that? I'm gonna change my clothes. I gotta leave here in a second. I was gonna try. I'm. I'm thinking about putting some concealer on here just so I look a little less busted, crusted, and dusted. Even though I really just want to put pimple medicine on it and call it a day and go outside. But it's like, that's a big surface area to cover with pimple medicine, you know what I'm saying? Like, not just like a little spot, but anyways, child. I can't wait for it to be peel season so I can get me another peel. I know what peels I'm getting this year, so I'm probably get like three of them because by next year... I really want my hair or my skin to be flourishing. Should we put some concealer on it? We probably should. Yesterday I just walked around with a pimple patch on my forehead and it looked a mess. But my skin is like, it's not dry, but I don't know. I don't know, child. I've been putting aloe vera gel and vitamin C on it to help it heal. I'm just trying to go back to everything that I used to do with my skin and used to know. I think COVID hit, we all started getting influenced to do a lot of this, a lot of that. There was a lot of stress factors because after COVID is really the first time in my life I ever had just like bad acne and it kind of just stayed since then. Like, I mean, not, I don't have horrible, horrible acne. Don't let me say that. Of course, obviously it could be worse, but like for me, I just never had like huge under the skin pimples and like you know stuff like that and just like when i was having those really bad breakouts on my cheeks i never really had that before until after covid and i started trying a whole bunch of new stuff you know now we all got tiktok and all these things to look at and watch and be influenced by and a hundred thousand skincare routines and products you should be using but i've just kind of like dialed it back which i've said a lot of times but then i always end up going back to some but i'm actually just using like the stuff that i used to use back when my face was like super duper clear then i obviously need to be like i need to take care of my body as well and just be hydrating more and stuff like that that plays a big part in it so yeah i'm just using my concealer this is in the tart in the tart this is tart the ultra creamy concealer i had a couple little red spots under here too i don't really want to do too much because i'm literally just going to the movies and it's going to be dark but I, I, I wanted to try to make myself feel a little bit better about this huge pimple bruise thing i don't know where my beauty blender is at but i had this little brush so i just figured i'll dab it in with the brush we'll see anytime i go to blend out my concealer on top of like a little blemish or something it always just looks this concealer is also too dark I don't have a tan right now, but I don't know where my other concealer is. Oh, here it is. I need to turn off some more lights. Let's make it a little bit brighter in here. It just gets all crusty. Like, it's all cakey. And then it's like, what was the point? What was the point of even putting this on? Does it look worse or does it look better? I'm trying to debate if I should go on this cruise, y'all. 
Aaron's whole family is going on this cruise not his whole family but like his mom and like his family from St. Louis they're all going on this cruise at the end of the month and originally we weren't going to go because we had plans to go somewhere else but now I'm just kind of like dang I really want to go and I think it would be a nice little trip before Carter starts kindergarten because we'd come back like right before it's like a seven day cruise going to like Turks and Caicos um but it's leaving out of Florida and like we don't have any tickets it's like next Saturday is when it leaves yeah I'm just gonna make it worse if I keep on trying to anyways I tried my best whatever does it look a little bit better can you it's a little less no it's like a little diluted down but you can still kind of anyways whatever oh I need to start back using this I gotta organize my bathroom I organized my closet, but I was just clean, like picking up my bathroom. I didn't really organize it. My room is also a literal disaster. I got a lot of stuff I want to do. I want to get my eyebrows re-microbladed, but I need to get them removed first. <sighs> Anyways, child. What should I put on? Hmm. I just want to wear something comfy. I haven't unpacked my laundry since it came last week, so don't look. I just want some sweatpants, but I think all my sweatpants are put away for the winter time. I've just been throwing all the laundry right here for the past couple of days. <laughs> nope. Nope. I think I'm just going to throw on a jacket. Gotta put the sunglasses on top of my head because that makes me feel put together. I think I'm just gonna throw a jacket. I'm just gonna throw this Nike hoodie on and I'm just gonna wear the shorts that I have on and take a little blanket. Oh, oh. My bun definitely just went flying. My go to when I don't know what I'm gonna wear. The camera has been really bad at focusing lately. Whatever you're doing, stop. I should have probably waited for the sun so I got out of the car because it's supposed to be hot as hell. It's like getting up to like 106 these days. I'm ready to move out of Texas. I don't care. Anybody says, everybody wants to move here. I, I don't know why. I honestly have no idea why. I'm so excited to do my hair today, you guys. That's if it comes out looking how I am imagining it. My hair is not very thick, so when I do natural hairstyles, I always know like I don't really like it as much as if I had like hair added, like, you know, actual box break and stuff. The disrespect but I am excited to just have my hair something done to it and this is gonna be a trial run basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to do my own little natural braids see if I can rock the look okay because it is a hard look to serve not that I really care about being cute necessarily because I just don't have nowhere to go that I really care about somebody thinking if I look cute or not you know what I'm saying but if it's real bad like real real bad then I'm gonna just probably go get some more stitch braids for a little while and then just try to like maintain my hair in between the stitch braids as far as like deep conditioning it protein treatments trims and stuff like that my room is a mess I got I don't need to leave right now everybody else is already leaving because they live a little bit further but I'm close, so I'm like, I don't need to leave right now. I don't want to be the first one there either. Ooh, unless there's no parking. I didn't think about that. Nice place. Parking is a little weird, but more parking in the back. Staff are very friendly. Food was good. Theater clean. 18 days ago. Let's go. I'm going to see y'all. Actually, I'm going to put some lotion on my legs. Instead of lotion, I'm actually just going to spray this. We're gonna do like a whole self-care night tonight. We're gonna put the bed, kids to bed and then I gotta do like shave my legs, my armpits, everything. It's just, it's giving hairy, ashy, dusty, crusty, dead skin. Ooh, I need to get a pedicure too. I've been trying, I don't know when I'm gonna go get my toes done. Mm. Okay, for real, bye. All right, it is finally time to get into all of this. So. I'm going to show y'all. If you watched my last vlog, I went to the beauty supply store. And I got a couple things. So I don't think I'm going to be able to use everything I got today. But I just thought I would show you guys. So I got the daily anti-breakage strengthening cream from Dr. Miracles. I wanted to smell it because they used to have a smell. 
It doesn't have the same smell anymore. Let's see. This is the hot grow scalp treatment. I'll probably put this in my hair. I gotta reread the directions. Okay, yeah. You can use this as daily use. Ooh, that still smells the same. This is just giving me childhood memories. Or like young adult, not childhood. Ooh, it makes your head, your scalp tingle. Okay, and then I got the Afro G two step protein treatment, which I am gonna use this um, today. The directions, I'm pretty sure. I think you just leave it in your, you wash your hair, put it in, leave it in for a little minute, shake well, cleanse, apply the treatment to thoroughly saturated hair, comb, leave in your hair, sit under the dryer. We ain't gonna do all that today. I do got a dryer, but we're not gonna do all that today. Wait till your hair gets hard and then you rinse it out and then you put this in there. So I'm gonna do that all that while I'm in the shower. I know it says don't use a plastic bag, but I'm not going under the steamer, so I probably will use a plastic bag just to cover my hair, and I'm gonna do the rest of my shower like shave and stuff while the treatment sits on my hair and then rinse it out. Follow the instructions. Don't listen to me. I have unsolicited advice, but that's what I'm gonna do. And I also got the Strength and Repair Mask by Shea Moisture. Oh, this smells like Play-Doh. I actually don't really like the smell of this, but I like the mask. And then I'm also just probably gonna put this in my hair daily. I like apply it to my scalp. I might do a hot oil treatment. I'm not gonna do it today, but maybe on the next wash day. I usually do this like once, like this whole thing, not the protein treatment, but like deep condition, detangle, and restyle my hair like once a week back in the gap when I was doing it before. And then I got some more wild growth oils. And then also I'm gonna make some rosemary water as well. About to take a shower, I am going to do all of the things. I'm gonna use the new Kapari stuff that I got. I use the body wash, it smells amazing. Literally the smell addicting, but I haven't used the scrub yet. So I'm gonna probably use the scrub because I'm gonna shave, exfoliate, everything. I'm not gonna film while I'm in the shower though because I'm honestly just like exhausted. So I will give y'all a little update when I get done and we're doing my hair. see you last night but we're gonna do hair right now i'm trying to decide if i'm gonna sit down or if i'm gonna stand up and do it in the bathroom i don't really know what i'm gonna do yeah but anyways a <sighs> little update it looks so much better than it did yesterday so i'm not even mad i already did my skincare this morning put my sunscreen on um i went and got a lash fill really fast so this recovery balm i swear is like the shit that plus vitamin c serum really just helps your post breakouts or whatever so anyways i slept with the in my hair so i got these two little braids i was rocking but covering up with the scarf because what is that so i'm about to just take these down and while i do my hair i'm gonna answer some little questions i asked you guys to ask me questions on instagram and on my youtube so even if you don't follow me on instagram because be for real do I ever post content on there? Never. I'm gonna take my hair down and then figure out where exactly I wanna get settled in it. I probably should sit down. I'm also gonna leave the deep conditioner in my hair cause I don't know, I'm gonna tell y'all what I do but I'm not saying obviously I'm not a beautician, hairstylist, anything. I personally leave the deep conditioner in my hair cause I have low porosity hair and so my hair just gets really dry really easily 
and i wet my hair in the shower even if i like put it in these mini braids i'm still gonna get it wet and so the product is gonna end up rinsing itself out and i'm also gonna use another product on top of that while i'm braiding my hair but again if that's too much for you i need to add that to my calendar okay anyways if that's too much for you then you know you just do whatever works for you best for you boo I'm going to do my braids with this. I'm also not going to blow dry my hair or anything like that just to like not put any excessive heat on it. And like I said, I'm going to get my hair back wet anyways. It's not like I'm trying to like maintain this style to look like fresh and crisp. If you get what I'm saying, I'm more so just like doing something to my hair. So I'm trying to see. I don't know how big I want to do them. I was thinking about maybe doing twists instead of braids. I might, we gonna see. I was gonna try and do the little boho braids and I might still do like a few like that in the in the front, but I know I'm not gonna wear my hair down because my hair's too thin to wear this style like down. So I'm probably just gonna end up putting it up anyways, but I'm really just gonna stand right here and do it because why not? I'm also not gonna braid it in any particular like, way if that makes sense like i'm not gonna try to make sure my parts are neat or anything i'm just doing this to simply like keep my hair protected braid it up and then like low manipulation like i don't have to do my hair every single day so i gotta switch out my memory card really fast and then we'll get into the questions and okay i think we're good let's go ahead and get started I think I'm just going to stand up for now. We might sit down later, but anyways, okay. Okay, maintaining sense of self while being a young mom. I read this one while I was in the car, and I feel like my answer is not going to be what everybody expects it to be, but honestly, I do not know who I would be if I didn't have kids. And for my situation, I'm kind of grateful that it happened that way because I don't have like this old life that i feel like i miss after having kids i don't really know what my life my adult life is like without kids because i had my first son at 17 so all i know is being a mom which i also don't find anything wrong with that now i know it's hard for some people when they have kids later in life and you know you've already Figured yourself out as an adult. I think my figuring myself out as an adult will come later in life like when my kids are older. And I definitely think it's important. That's just not like my journey right now or like whatever I experienced. I mean, I just feel like if I did have things that I used to do before I had kids and like that's who I was, I would just try to continue doing those things i feel like that wasn't a good question for me to answer because i honestly i don't know i don't know who i would be if i didn't have kids i don't know myself as but a mother i mean i was very motherly even before i had kids to my siblings my friends my parents like i just am kind of that's that i feel like that is a part of my identity and i also don't think there's anything wrong with that so let me get the next question before i start this spread i'll try to answer as many as i can because i feel like i'm gonna be doing my hair so i'm gonna try to get to everybody's question and just start from the bottom i only posted this like five minutes ago also so somebody said why don't you use native products anymore no particular reason i like their body wash but and i just try out new products use new products and kind of moved along from native it's nothing i particularly dislike Somebody said, what brings out your feminine side? I feel like the only time I'm like super girly is if like I'm going on like a date and it's like a, a dinner date or something where like the occasion is like when you wear a dress. But I never really grew up like super girly. My mom also wasn't super girly. Never wore dresses. I never did my hair. I had my hair done. Never wore makeup. I wouldn't consider myself like a tomboy, but I know I'm not like a girly girly girl. But I think in like as I get older, again, I'm discovering more things about myself and I actually like like wearing dresses now and I like having my hair done and things like that. But yeah, I don't know. I'm just giving you all my real answers. This is not <coughs> advice. Somebody said, how do you find alone time being a mom? So basically to answer the question, I would say 
you have to ask for help sometimes which i know like now you guys see like i'm around more people and, like my mom comes over and aaron's mom is here a lot but for the longest time like one we didn't always have the greatest relationship two i didn't like asking people for help so i just didn't ever have any alone time when I was like with the kids 24 7 or working and now when I need a break I ask for help because alone time is something that I actually really enjoy like I like to sit down on the couch and just be able to watch my shows without having to cater to you know like everybody else's needs or whatever they have going on so now I just ask I'm like I need a break can you keep the kids after church can you keep the kids on a Saturday, you know what I'm saying? I just try to ask for help. I know when I'm getting tapped out and when I need to lean on somebody else to be able to recharge myself. When do you truly feel like your prettiest self? I feel like my prettiest self when my hair is healthy and my skin is clear. And that is like the best way I could sum it up. I don't feel like I need to have a certain hairstyle or dress a certain way for my body to even be a certain way for me to feel good about myself. The two things that really play factors in that is my skin and my and my hair just like being held for instance like being able to wear my hair just in its natural curly state and it's not damaged and you know I just like being in my natural state when it when I'm when I'm flourishing you know what I'm saying. How I started my YouTube journey I feel like I've answered this quite a few times but I really just started during the pandemic I was at home everybody was at home and I had quit my job which I should have never done because the pandemic started and I could have gotten employment but anyways that's another story for another time first video I ever posted was like a vlog it was like an Easter vlog and it was when I was super into like making cute little desserts and balloon arches and I was hosting Easter this was like right at the beginning of COVID so everybody didn't know how serious it was so we still like had everybody over at our house for Easter even though we were supposed to be in quarantine but anyways yeah I started my channel off the, on vlogs and then I started doing like hygiene routines and stuff because I knew a lot about hygiene and so I just like shared the products that I was using and the tips and tricks and things that worked for me and they kind of just like blew up and then here we here we are updated supplements i honestly to tell you the truth have only been really taking my neutrophil and it does have other like you know good benefits to it besides just like helping your hair grow it's kind of like a multivitamin it's just good for you in general and that's really all i've been taking at the moment that's that's all <laughs> that's, that's it i'm not on like a big supplement kick right now i know i need to start back like taking all of my different stuff but i just i haven't been i need to at least be taking like a probiotic or a prebiotic or something but do you get help with the kids other than aaron when you need a break i feel like i just answered that question yes aaron's mom um especially like more in the last year has been super helpful with the boys even if they don't stay over at her house she will just like come over a lot and help me with them if i need help like getting them ready for bed or just like being here you know what i'm saying just as an extra like helping hand if Aaron is not around. I feel like I'm losing my voice for some reason. Tips for getting back out after giving birth and having mom guilt. The mom guilt is always gonna be there. I just think if you have mom guilt, then you're probably a good mom. So just keep that in mind. If you care or you're missing your kids, then that's probably a, that's probably a good sign. That's probably, you know, I feel like that's natural. Like I feel like everybody who is cautious consciously trying to be a good mom gets mom guilt and that's just a part of being a mom but your kids are gonna be fine what do you do on your period days when you want to make yourself feel better honestly i do nothing like on my period like but in a good way like i just relax and i just do things that i enjoy so personally that would be like watching shows get my heating pad laying on the couch just chilling out eating my favorite snacks and just taking some downtime because I feel like that's just kind of like a pump that you have to get over every month and so that's the best way I can deal with it. I used to get like super worked up about any little thing when I was about to be at my period and now I just kind of, I just chill, I just vibe because I know it's just my period and I'm not going to feel like that like right after it's over. <laughs> okay, somebody said, how do you manage your time and edit slash work and deal with mom stuff every day? You do things. So, because some people, your kids like may still be home or whatever. So, and that was the case for me at certain points too. But so like if my kids are in school, then I kind of treat it like a nine to five. So I do all of my work stuff 
during my working time while my kids are at school. And then I do all of my mom stuff, like when the kids are coming home or a couple hours before they come home, I'll stop if I need to like get things done that I know I wouldn't be able to get done like while they're running around the house or whatever, then I'll do that. And then I pick them up and then I kind of just go into mom mode and I don't really do anything work-wise. If I need to finish anything up that's like, needs my urgent attention then i'll do it at night before they go to sleep and then if not i just wake up the next day and and do it um now when my kids were home it was harder honestly with like editing and like emails and stuff like that but i would either wake up before my kids and do whatever i needed to do work wise or i would stay up late after they went to sleep <laughs> and then i would also try to work during their nap times so I would just work around them, which obviously it's not ideal, but it's kind of just like, what are you, what are you willing to do? You gotta, you gotta get on your Zoom, right? You gotta get on your Zoom, you know what I'm saying? That's what I just tell myself. It's like, if I want to have a good outcome or I want to, you know, have the results that I put on my vision board for the year and I want to hit certain milestones and goals, like I have to stay up later than everybody else. I have to work harder than everybody else. And I think that's just with anything in life. How do you fit in alone time with your spouse while having kids? And I would say we go on a lot of dates while the kids are at school. Like we will go to the movies, we'll go out to eat, like go on lunch dates and stuff like that. It's not always like easy to get a babysitter or to rely on somebody else to be able to get that time in. So we kind of just go like that or we stay up and we watch movies or tv together it's not always something like extravagant and extreme you know what i'm saying but <laughs> you fit it in where you can get it in really especially if like both of you guys work like regular jobs i know for me whenever i worked a nine to five i would ask to take which i know everybody can't do this but i would take like a half day one day out of the week so i would get to leave a little bit before we had to go pick up carter and carson from school or carter from school and we would go to the movies or go out to eat or do something like that so how do you deal with hyperpigmentation on your hoo-ha and other parts of your body this is all you need she is your best friend ever forever and ever and ever and ever and ever it's the pfb vanish you can get it off amazon it just really helps with ingrowns and dark marks and lightening up that area you just have to use it consistently but that is actually one of those products you really don't even have to use like that much to see results like if i have an ingrown and i use pfp vanish it will go away within like one to two days so i really like that i'm gonna go over to youtube now and see if there's anything on there hardest part about managing work while being a parent i feel like the hardest part is like the time management and the balancing of it i used to be really bad about like putting my work stuff up like after the kids would come home and then I would find myself like being frustrated because I'm like, okay, I got to stop what I'm doing here to go do this. But now I just make being a mom like my my, my non-negotiable thing. Like I always put my work stuff up when the kids are home. I don't even try. I don't even try to get on my computer or try to do anything because I know it'll either just lead to like me being frustrated with them or frustrated with myself or feeling bad. So I just, I just don't do that anymore. But about to have my third baby. How did you find a good routine to stay the best mom? Honestly, throwing a third child into the mix has been the most chaotic, hard thing I've ever done. And I think it's because I went back to the beginning. So I think it kind of depends on the age gap with your kids. But for instance, like Carter and Carson were out of diapers when I had Mello. Pretty independent, could play independently. You know what I mean? Like we could go out, do things. They're obviously mobile. <laughs> they're walking, they're talking, they can communicate. So starting all the way back over with the baby, it was hard. I'm not going to lie. And I feel like I'm still trying to find a routine like in a balance. So I would say just give yourself grace. And the one thing that I've finally, finally accepted, even though I say it all the time, it's just like my life is never going to be the perfect laid out type A schedule that I think it's going to be. It's never going to happen. I will spend thousands of hours trying to refigure my morning routine to make it be like perfect or my nighttime routine but every night and every day literally just isn't the same so as long as everybody's basic needs are met and they have been bathed they're happy they took a shower they've gotten lotion did i say ate dinner or eaten then it was a successful nighttime routine like they're not gonna fall asleep on the dot 
at the same time every single day. It's just not realistic. And I think once I started putting that into perspective, it was just easier on me mentally because I didn't feel as guilty or overwhelmed trying to stick to this strict schedule. Now, do I think you have to have some type of schedule and routine? Yeah, like some type of structure, like whatever works for you. We start baths at the, around around this time. You know, nothing just like super specific on the dot. I think that's what makes me get caught up the most. But I try out different things. Like I tried out a lot of things. I tried cooking dinner before the kids come home, which really helps earlier in the day. I tried <clears throat> bath before dinner. I tried dinner before bath. And so now I kind of know what works for me and like what works best. I also try to like make sure I spend at least like some individual time with my with my kids, whether that's like laying with them um before they go to sleep or playing with them while they're in the bath or just like you know just little things like that and it looks differently every day like every day it's not the exact same in a perfect world it would be because that's how my brain is set up but it's just not it's just not reality how do you keep a long-term relationship interesting and exciting i feel like accepting that your relationship it's not always going to be interesting and exciting is the key <laughs> to, to being happy, I guess. I think if you put too much expectations on your relationship that it's supposed to just be so exciting and romantic and I'm just head over heels every day and just love you so much, like, that's another movie unrealistic expectation. Some days the days are boring, some days they're mundane. Sometimes you get in a rut where you feel like you're living the same day <laughs> over and over and over again. So I would say that one and then two, I mean obviously, like I said, we go out together a lot as far as like, you know, spending individual time with each other outside of kids. Like we'll go do the things that we like, like eat, go to the movies. That's really the things that we like to do <laughs> or travel. But yeah, you can also pick up like new hobbies. If you want to be adventurous, I feel like you can be. You just gotta, you just gotta, you know, do some research. There's so much stuff to do. You just have to be intentional, but also be okay. If every day is not amazing. These braids look crazy, but that's okay. It's gonna keep me from having to do my hair every single morning because I'm just gonna slap these bad boys up into a little bun. Any interesting or juicy topics that you have in mind for your upcoming podcast? I don't. So if you guys want to leave me some, feel free. Okay, somebody said wanting kids close in age, but not mentally or physically ready for baby number two. I have an 18 month old baby girl right now, just starting to feel like I have a balance on my life and feeling like myself again. I would say then don't rush to have another baby if your kids are not super close in age or it doesn't happen like that it's not the end of the world i used to think I, I needed to have my kids close in age for them to grow up as close siblings but what i really needed was them to just be raised in the same household that's all that that that's that that was the the factor i just wanted my kids to be close because i didn't feel like i had a bit very close with a relationship with any of my siblings i wanted that for my kids but i think if your kids are growing up in the same home they're most likely they're most likely going to be close when i see the gap between like a five-year-old and, and a baby versus like two back to back to back for some people that actually like works a lot better and then you know the kid is at an age where they're excited about the baby and they want help with the baby and five years is really not that much like <clears throat> i think my aunt's or five years apart and they're all they're all they're all close and they all grew up in the same house so like I, like i said and then i know our cousins on aaron's side they have a sister who's like way younger like i mean i'm talking about like decades younger than them like and they're all still super close it's just a different dynamic of the you know they're not in the same you know can talk about or relate to maybe the same things but they're still close with each other and take her to do things and you know what i mean so i wouldn't stress it if you're not ready don't don't force it what would be the fun in that date night ideas when you don't have a babysitter paint and sip movie make a fort sit in the car listen to music cook dinner for each other cook together tiktok has a lot of ideas i'm sure more way more than what i can probably list but doing puzzles coloring pictures making a vision board tasting like tasting liquors Tasting tequilas, like go get a little, like a little mini, do your own little like tasting flight of tequilas or wines or 
rums, bourbon, whatever you like. Okay, somebody said, what is the last TV show or movie that made you cry? The movie I went to go see this week, actually, Joyride, there was like a scene in the movie where the adopted girl goes back and her birth mother passed away, but she left her like a video message and I was boo-hoo-hooing in the movies, like just really crying. <laughs> I'm very like that though. Like I will cry about anything. How do you deal with being put in a position at your church by your leaders where you don't feel like you're in the right position, but you don't want to say no? Side note, I pray to God and talk to the leaders and still doesn't feel like the right position for me. I don't want to sound like I'm saying no any advice or tips on this topic. I feel like this situation, you just have to relate it back to any other like, like life situation. If you feel uncomfortable doing something, I'll just politely decline and I am like the most unconfrontational person in the world I'm actually working on being more upfront about things because I will like say yes to things or do things anyways because I feel obligated because someone's asking me even though I really don't want to do it you have to be a big girl and just say I would prefer to do something else or I think I would be a better asset in this area and hopefully those people would respect you especially in a church setting and be understanding of that and if they're not, I would still politely decline. And if it's like a small group or something, I would find another small group. Cause church people can be messy. Church people can be messy. Like don't get me, that's why, that's why church has such a bad, bad rap. There's a couple people at my church that I low key be beefing with. Like I'm not, even, I'm not even kidding, but I'll probably talk about that on another day. What age would you recommend moving in with your partner? What your mom tell you to do? She say, do as I say, not as I do. Yeah, don't move in with your partner until you get married. I'm just saying, the, there's a reason why God says you're supposed to do things in a certain order and a way it's supposed to go. Regardless of how in love and whatever you are, there are gonna be challenges that occur that you could avoid if you did things the way you're supposed to do it. So I would say don't move in. I mean, if I had to give advice to my daughter, I would tell her don't move in until you're married or engaged and keep it at that. I mean, I just would, even if that means you had to live at home, stay home if that's an option or roommate with a girl or a friend. Don't be mad at me. I didn't say I would do it, but if I could go back and I knew the things that I knew now, that's what I would do genuinely. So. Okay, I gotta change out the battery really fast and then we'll move on to the next question. Moving on to the next question. Somebody said, when are you gonna get your closet? Which I think they're meaning wardrobe together because you're 24 and you need to start being outside giving the girls a bad bitch error. Anyways, so happy for you. And then the rest of this, it wasn't a question, the rest of the message, but thank you. So I'm gonna tell y'all something that I feel like is like a controversial take. I feel like you can be like a cute girl but you're not a bad bitch. And I feel like I'm not a bad bitch. <laughs> like, I know that sounds bad in the way that I'm saying it, but I feel like bad bitch is an energy. It's not a, you know, and some people just got it and some people just don't. And I'm just one of those people who just like, I'm not, so I'm not giving, I'm not serving looks. I'm not giving, I can't take pictures. I can't pose. I can't look cute. I can't like, it's just not, it's just not in me. You know, some things are just in some people and some things are just not. And I just, it's not in me. So. <laughs> As much as I would love to have like have that error as well, like maybe I will later in life when I'm like older and more grown and I can like, you know, spend more of my time curating those things and learning those things about myself. But I literally have an infant, a toddler and a miniature adult, you know what I'm saying? So currently it's just not that. I feel like also in order for me to be able to like style myself in a way that I would feel like confident pres like presenting myself, I would have to get in the gym and get in shape and do all of those things, which are very important and I do plan on doing, but have I gotten around to that? No. If I ever do have a bad bitch era, it will come after my fitness bay journey era. You never know, 30 year old me might have a bad bitch era, 40 year old me might have a bad bitch era, like we'll just, you know, we'll have to wait and see. How's your relationship with God going? Um, it's going good. I feel like I am finally in a place where I'm like very consistent in like being in my Bible and like pursuing a relationship with God and trying to, you know, let go of like old habits or like worldly things that I know I shouldn't do or haven't been doing. I'm not perfect. You know, I'm not there yet. I don't think I'll ever be perfect. I don't think anybody or any 
person walking on a spiritual journey ever is 100% perfect, but it's going good. Like, I'm very at peace about a lot of things. Like, I don't know. I just, I just have, like, more sense of, like, peace, and I'm not as worried and stressed out about things that used to stress me out. How to deal with being disconnected from your child's father's side of the family, how to navigate not having a genuine bond or relationship, and then also still not being comfortable with them having your kid. I would say, which probably sounds like the easy and obvious answer, but I would say try building a relationship with their family. I mean, it's better to have tried and say that you put your best foot forward than to leave it how it is because that can be really hard especially you know you are you know as a mom you know you, you sometimes do be uncomfortable like maybe with your kid going around people that you're not necessarily like close to but also another thing that i would say is if you're with the child's father or you trust the family but maybe necessarily you're not super close still allow your kids to have a relationship with those people because my battery cut out mid-sentence it was so disrespectful i don't know why i just i just changed it but anyways I don't know, I used to be, I used to feel like that. I used to feel like, oh, if you're not close to me, you're not gonna be close to my kid. And that included like anybody, like even my own mom. Like I would be like, no, like if you think you're about to try to have a relationship with my child, but you don't have a relationship with me, like no, no. But I know that that was also stemming from me being more so hurt by not having a relationship with those people. And then more so just wanting to keep my kids from them because I felt like, if you weren't trying to pursue a relationship with me, why would you want to pursue a relationship with my child? But I've learned to separate the two. My relationship with my family is not going to be the same relationship that my kids have with those people. You might not have the best relationship, but that doesn't mean they're not going to have a good relationship with my kid. Now, if they started to do things that I felt like was negatively impacting my kids, then of course they wouldn't be around them. But you gotta learn how to separate the two. Also try to reach out. They might be feeling how you feel and they may wanna be close to you, but they don't know how. Everybody is different, so. You know, I think as long as it's not like a disrespect thing and they just like genuinely like don't care for you, just just, just try. Maybe seeing like if you guys can hang out or do a family activity all together, like outside of like, you know, in big settings where like the entire family is there and holidays and things like that like things that are like smaller more intimate where you can actually get to know them better without maybe having like a ton of people around somebody said do you be smoking just curious i'm not gonna say i never smoke but i'm not a i'm not a social smoker i'm not a regular smoker but i don't smoke if i go out i don't smoke around my friends family like yeah and i'm also just not like a big fan of i'm just not a big fan of weed like just personally like the way it just like makes me feel it's just not <laughs> it's just not really my vibe so no i really don't smoke that much <laughs> but i'm not gonna say i never do or i haven't there was another part of the question that also says uh, dealing with drama with co-workers at work don't engage like not even with your bestest friend in the office like talking about other people like just don't engage with the drama at work because you don't even know like even if you think that's your work bestie she might have other work besties and she might be telling you know xyz i just especially when it comes to work no drama no drama don't talk to me i'm here to get my job i mean unless it's like about something positive or we're talking about our personal lives which even then is a thin line with people at work but i don't know i know i know that it's inevitable i know that it happens because anywhere you work especially if you work like with a lot of girls it's gonna be some type of drama like women game that was like my biggest thing when i worked in an office with all girls it was literally drama all the time and I would literally just go to my desk, clock in, and I just didn't, I literally didn't talk to anybody at that job, except for the girl that I worked directly with. You know, I'm not going to say I never gossiped with her, because that would be a lie, but I tried not to, and I just kept my, my opinion to myself, because it's almost like the people who are gossiping, you always have to, like, take a step back and look at them and be like, mm, mm, do I really want to be friends with you if, like, all you do is talk shit about everybody else in the office, because what are you saying about me? Yeah. <laughs> so... That's why I just mostly didn't didn't engage. Y'all blew up Instagram now. Why don't you do get ready with me deep appointments anymore? And I feel like honestly, it's just a part of my spiritual journey and I don't want to be promoting people or young girls to be having 
sex because there's just like so many things that come along with that and i think when i first started doing them i was obviously like a younger but honestly it's just like the simple answers because like i just didn't want to promote that to young girls you know you're grown you're married that's a different conversation but everybody has access to the internet and while i do really like giving hygiene advice and tips and stuff like that because i feel like hygiene just plays a role in your confidence and if i can help people be more confident and to smell good i'm all good with that but i also like i said didn't want to promote sex to young girls so that is that's where i stopped doing them somebody said do you want to have more kids one day yes and no i could definitely see myself fostering kids or adopting kids who are of an older age i could also see myself being pregnant again but as a surrogate it's a hard question because in an ideal world i wouldn't mind having a hundred thousand kids but i also have to know what my capacity and limit is to being a good mom and the quality of life i'm giving to all the the, the kids i would potentially like have so i've always kind of wanted to foster kids um so i could see myself doing that i think i want to have any more biological children but that could always change you know i i, I don't know i don't know but right now and where my life is at and what i'm thinking i think i'm cool on it i think three i'm, ma I'm maxed on the three <laughs> right now we'll see did i miss a piece of hair and i did lovely i'm not putting it back i'm not i'm not i'm not how to get over um a man who lied about keeping in contact with a certain ex and his bitter mama she didn't say that but i just put that on there she said bitter mom um i feel like two things it depends if you're still with them because if you're still gonna stay with them then you really gotta learn how to let it go i'm just gonna say that i feel like that is like the biggest thing like if you are gonna take somebody back after they did something to you you have to while it's the hardest thing easier said than done you have to you gotta you gotta let it go you gotta let it go you gotta stop beefing with his mama let his mama be who his mama is and just separate that from yourself you don't gotta love her like her have a relationship with her i mean that would be ideal and at some point maybe that will change but for the time being if that's not what it is you know and then if you're not with them anymore see that's a hard question for me to answer because i don't have an ex that i had to like get over per se so i don't really feel like i have good advice but if you left them and it's over and you're not going back or you don't want to go back I don't know you know what i'm saying so what is me and my spouse's love language so i feel like all men always say their love language is physical touch so i know i've asked aaron that before and that's what he said mine is definitely acts of service i love when people just do things and i don't have to ask them to to get them done because i have a really hard problem asking for help and for people to do things for me but that doesn't mean i don't want help or i don't want people to do things for me it's just that i i have a problem asking so i think mine is acts of service the ends of my hair right here are so thin i need to cut them like look how thin that strand is you can't even probably see it but i probably should have parted my hair in the middle a little bit better but we're just gonna go with the flow are you in the market of making new friends i feel like yes and no like i'm not a person who's like so closed off to making friends i'm not gonna like intentionally go out of my way to say i do not want to make friends and i am not currently make taking friend no like if i'll become friends with anybody if it happens organically now I'm, i've never been a person who just like oh i'm gonna like go out and try to make new friends i've never been that type of person i don't ever think i will be i'm just a very introverted person and so that's just not my thing also i have sustained without having friends for long periods of time which i think having a really good friend is like an amazing thing like i do want to have that like get back to having that one day i don't know like i said i'm not closed off to being making friends i'm just not going out of my way to make friends does that make sense what is the biggest thing you have learned while looking to buy a house or just any tips Okay, I hope this answer is helpful, but I don't know if it will be. You're thinking about like, oh, well, I'm going to buy this house, kind of how I was in the beginning. And then you're like, well, I can just rent it out later. Or but, mm, It's really not that lucrative of passive income, if it is any income at all, the way the interest rates are. So I wouldn't 
bank on that and then if you're thinking about like how you can invest in real estate try to find some other ways to do that besides rental properties because i used to think oh i want to get into like having rental properties and tenants and like um short term rentals are obviously lucrative money but airbnb is like so up and down with like now you can do it in like it's banned in dallas i think starting in november like you can't even airbnb so like all those people who are making income off of airbnb like i don't know what they're gonna do i don't know if they if like that means you can go to another platform if that means all short term um like stuff is done in the city of dallas and i know they've done that in other cities so i don't know anyways that'd be my biggest thing and then also just like having a good realtor somebody who's honest um i definitely if you could would buy new construction or a home that has a warranty on it because it's expensive everything about the house is expensive so yeah and then also it's like a controversial take but i know a lot of people are just always saying like oh why rent when you could buy unless you paid cash money for your entire house and you don't have a mortgage you don't own your house the bank owns your house so the only thing that you can really do that other people can't do is pick up and leave <laughs> like you could if you were in a rental i mean you would have fees but that's not as much as you would have if you walked away from your mortgage you know what i'm saying like i think people romanticize home ownership more than what it actually is i think it's a really big accomplishment and it does take like a lot of like work and um you know saving and discipline in that area is to be able to buy a home and then after you pay it off obviously it is yours but usually that's in you know 15 or 30 years <laughs> so don't rush it look for a long time study the neighborhoods that you want to live in spend time doing activities in the neighborhoods you think that you want to live in because you don't know like then you buy a house and then unless you sell your house you're kind of stuck where you're at it's not like renting like oh i'll just be here for a year and then i'll move along you know it's a bigger commitment than that so that's just something i would have taken more time to probably think about like i love the where i am and like you know what i mean but that's just something i would definitely take into consideration okay mother-in-law problems let your man handle his mom you don't need to say anything to her you don't need to be confrontational her you know because at the end of the day that's always going to be that person's mother so regardless you don't want to do damage to the relationship by saying things that you can never take back you know what i'm saying or putting yourself in a position to where now you guys don't get along and you don't think that the relationship could be repaired if i ever have a problem with aaron's mom which if you're watching this she knows she like she knows and it's a conversation that we've also had like me and her are very close now we've had our seasons of being close not being close not liking each other being you know what i mean so we've kind of like ebbed and flowed and had like almost like a mother-daughter relationship i've been knowing her since i was 12 years old <laughs> so she is like like my second mom at this point but any time that her and i have ever bumped heads about things i don't ever say anything to her because one i'm not going to disrespect his mom and then two i feel like it's just not my place like that's his mom so if something happens that i don't like he'll handle it and so i've been able to benefit from that a lot like if there's anything that happens aaron or it might aaron foresees it happening he always nips everything in the bud like he's always just been really good about that i don't really have to tell him he knows like get your mama get your mama you know what i'm saying so i just let them hash it out and i let them handle it not to say that she probably doesn't ever think like oh this was i know that's coming from her blah 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 whatever but you have to talk to your mama and if you can't talk to his mama well <laughs> we need to go to counseling or we need, we need to have somebody else yeah, intervene to to really like navigate because i know that can be like probably a really hard thing so if you don't have somebody who's willing to like stand up or say like you know or just even mediate you know what i mean it's not like they have to be rude or they have to do you know but i'm your girl you, who you fuck with me your mom me your mom like <laughs> so, i would just let them handle it okay what is your advice about starting a youtube i'm gonna say it i'm gonna say it again and i don't know what other sauce y'all think it is but it's not there's no sauce out there that i know of personally besides posting consistently the algorithm rewards consistency so like whatever you say is your goal to upload and it's feasible and you can do do that and don't miss it at even with me like you know i've been doing it for a couple years baby 
y'all might be mad that I miss a little Sunday upload or something on a weekly vlog. The algorithm is it's gonna I'm gonna I'm suffering I'm, I'm also suffering from that okay the algorithm is gonna be like girl I think until you get into like a certain point of like building so much of an audience that like you can be one of the people who can post whatever or do whatever and you're gonna get views or you're gonna get this and it doesn't matter you gotta stay in the, the good graces of the algorithm because that's really what pushes your videos out and it rewards consistency so that's all I can really say post as frequently as you can because that's the best way to reach people is if you're posting more content so you have a better chance of being seen and i really don't think that there's anything else to it besides that i really don't i know youtubers that have a million subscribers and they record on their phone the editing is not that great like there's all these factors that people think plays into it well now if you really enjoy it and it's a passion and you want to like perfect your craft then that's when you invest in all the other things like the good equipment the quality the cameras the lighting the speakers or microphones whatever you know what i'm saying but just to have the foundation of getting started, be consistent and engage with your audience and do what performs well in your channel. <laughs> How do you keep yourself from passing on generational trauma to your kids? Acknowledging that you have the trauma or the trait or the characteristic or the behavior and consciously trying not to be that thing and not trying to pass it on. It's a lot of hard work. Like, there are a lot of things that I'm like, I don't want to pass these on along to my kid. I don't want to be like XYZ who I got the gene from or it affected or affected me in that way. And I know that when you grow up in a house with people, or even if you don't, because I think behavior is inherited, you're going to be like the people that you may not like. And that's just the reality of it. Like, it's not in our control. And so the first step, I think, is just acknowledging like, I can do things that are like my mom that I didn't necessarily like my mom and that's the more easy route for me it'll be easier for me to just do those things because they're already embedded in me and that's kind of like who I am so I have to actively choose to not you know what I'm saying like I'm not good at like physical touch like hugging my kids or like saying I love you so that's something that I go out of my way to be intentional about every day i every day my kids wake up i don't say anything to my kids in the morning besides good morning first and i hug them and i kiss them and then i try to make sure like i spend extra time like with them at night like connecting with them and hugging with them and just like telling them that i love them and I'm, I'm proud of them and just like things that might be uncomfortable for me to like say because that's not how i grew up i just i do it anyways you know what i'm saying so okay somebody said a youtuber you think is overrated do y'all really think i'm about to answer that question be for real be for real i am a girl's girl and i don't think that anybody is overrated nobody and whatever their journey looks like impacts me or matters to me and if i don't like somebody's content i simply just don't watch it you can't be overrated if a ton of people like you you might i might not like your content but you're not overrated because clearly a lot of people fuck with you you know what i'm saying so it's not it's not a matter of that it's just a matter of if i don't like somebody's content i wouldn't watch regardless of how popular they were or not. But I think the majority of the content creators who are where they are deserve to be where they are and have worked really hard to build their platform. How do you motivate yourself to get up and take care of yourself? That's a hard question. I don't know. I think it's just an internal thing. I just be like, girl, you gotta get up. You gotta get up. You gotta get on your Zoom. <laughs> like, that probably sounds like a stupid answer, but that's how I motivate myself. I'd be like, girl, you gotta get up. You got to get up, you got to get up, you got to get on your Zoom because you're never going to get to where you want to be or be the person that you want to be if you don't start doing the things that you know it takes to be XYZ or to get to said destination. So I just feel you got to get up. How am I feeling one year postpartum? I'm feeling good. I feel like I'm feeling more like myself. My thoughts are less chaotic and crowded and i'm remembering things and i'm not having like pregnancy or postpartum brain as much i don't really feel like i had that bad of a postpartum with mellow to be honest i think i had a couple rocky months there um like when he was around what was that maybe like four months old i was kind of just like down in the dumps might have had some ppd but I'm feeling good now. Okay, somebody said hardest part about choosing to stop breastfeeding. I think the guilt. 
I think obviously, you know, everybody says fed is best, but there's that thing that's also like, you know, breast milk comes from our body, that's what we're supposed to give our babies, and then also just the benefits that comes from it, like, it really helps like if like keeping your baby from getting sick and like with their immunity and i think like after i stopped breastfeeding mellow and like my freezer stash had ran up i think he, like one time he got sick and then i felt really bad because i was just like dang if i was breastfeeding my body would have known what to produce and then he wouldn't have been sick anymore but that being said he didn't stay sick he didn't die he's perfectly fine and you know you have to weigh the pros and the cons but also something that i wish i would have done before i stopped breastfeeding altogether was supplementing and maybe doing formula and pumping still or breastfeeding until I got my supply back up because I didn't really do that and I think I would have breastfed longer if I would have did that like if I, I wasn't 100% ready to stop but I was also just like physically drained so my body just kind of gave up like I just gave up on myself even though I didn't really want to be done so if you're not 100% ready to just like throw in the towel I would say maybe just supplementing so then it gives you time like if your supply is not great and it's lacking a little bit or you're not pumping every two hours you still are getting some milk but maybe not enough just supplement until you're ready to like 100% be like okay I'm actually really done with this you know what I'm saying my arms are getting tired uh, my back is cramping so I'm gonna sit down Somebody said, how do you feel about the Kiki Palmer situation? And I actually really don't know too much about the Kiki Palmer situation. I've been hearing like a couple like snippets and, and, and things about it on people's podcast, but I don't really follow any T pages. I don't like, I literally don't be on social media, y'all, like really at all. I think her man was mad because of either where she was wearing or something she did when she was at an Usher concert, I believe. And he felt like she was dressed provocatively but the big controversy behind it is because he bashed her on the internet which i think is 100 percent unacceptable and first of all i think women should be able to wear whatever they want okay and especially if you're with a person you already know they dress a certain type of way or they have a certain type of lifestyle why are you gonna be mad at them for for being who they are that doesn't make any sense one and then it's never it's never okay to try to publicly embarrass your spouse, your children, your family, anybody really for that matter. Like, I would never intentionally try to go out of my way to like embarrass somebody on the internet. It's just something that could have been handled behind closed doors, I think. And everybody didn't need to be in a business. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's all I really could say. Somebody said, do you low key wish you would have had a baby girl? I can't say I don't be thinking about it. Like I don't be thinking about having a girl. I don't necessarily wish that Mello would have been a girl. But then I snap out of that really quickly when I look at my kids and their hair and and how much work that would be to have a girl. I want to be an aunt to a girl. Okay, how would you feel if your man had a girl bestie while he was dating you? For what? For what? For what? No. Immediately no. I mean, I think if like if there was a girl that we were all like, okay, I've been on Aaron for a long time, so say if he had a girl best friend in high school and like we were all collectively friends together, that would be different. Like if we were all friends, that's one thing like okay i don't necessarily think oh you can't be friends with any girl but i have to also be friends with the girl like it's not just like y'all just have a relationship i think that's hella weird so yeah that's all i can say i mean because i have guy friends like i have a guy best friend but he's also like mutually like aaron and i's friend you know what i'm saying it's not like a that's just my friend like we all grew up together we're all friends it's not that type of thing but anyways yeah pass <laughs> Any tips on how to stay unbothered and calm throughout the day? I think the answer that I want to give is like a surface level answer. And it just really, I've learned that a lot of things just come with like age or maturity and time because how I used to be versus how I am now is complete, not completely different, but like I could have like a really short temper. Like I could go outside and if a girl look at me one time oh it's up it's up and it's stuck like i'm gonna we're fighting me and you're beefing now now i just don't take anything personally nor do i think people are even worth the my energy or me being upset who especially if it's a strange if it's a stranger or a covert like somebody who's not a part of my like even people that are in my family life i just be like okay girl and then what and because what's really going to come out of this i don't know how to explain it i think it's just like a something that just came with like maturity and time like I don't let other people's energy affect me anymore like you're mad okay there's nothing I can do about it okay 
You know what I'm saying? Like, I think it applies to even just like small things. Like I used to have really bad road, road rage when I was younger. And now like if people honk at me, I flip me off like when I'm driving or whatever, especially because it's Texas. So it happens all the time. I literally would just be like, uh, I, it doesn't even phase me. Like it, I don't even think about it anymore. I mean like in the beginning when I was like transitioning into like trying to like calm myself down, I think I would just like try to be polite, like kill people with kindness. You know what I'm saying? And now I just don't do anything. I just don't even be faced. Like, I don't even think twice about it. I think the reason why we get so mad is because, like, we harbor on stuff and then we just, like, overthink it. Like, they just flick me off. Who the fuck do they think they are? They know I blah, 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 blah. And it's, like, more of, like, a pride thing. Now I just don't care. Like, girl, you honked your horn at me and then what? I still got over. I still did whatever. <laughs> so what? So what? So then what? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Life's too short to spend it being upset or being mad. <clears throat> Somebody said, how painful is waxing? Y'all make it look too damn easy. I'm gonna be the first. Listen, that shit, it hurts so. It hurts so bad. I'm not gonna sit up here and lie. I use numbing cream when I go get waxed. And uh, the more times you get waxed, I feel like the less it hurts. Like it doesn't hurt as bad anymore. Like the last couple times I haven't had numbing cream when I went to get a wax. And I was all right. But I feel like if you go into it with the mindset that it's gonna be painful and you set your expectations high like of the, the pain then it'll be less than what you think it is but also numbing cream will save your life you got to put it on like an hour before you go so you can make sure it's really you know s you know sits in there but yeah it hurts it's not easy i ain't never said that now with the numbing cream it's a breeze but if you don't have any numbing cream i'd be sweating bullets i can't even lie to you i'm gonna have to redo this one because it's in the front, I'm going to have to make it look a little bit nicer at least. And these parts are shit, but that's okay. I really don't care. <clears throat> How long have I been talking to y'all? It's been a long time. Wow. Somebody said, do you plan on moving again or is this the forever house? I think this house had the potential to be a forever home because I think we could have expanded onto this house because the square footage of this house is really not that big like i don't think that like it could just you know fit the capacity of like my boys getting older and like having friends like bigger friends you know around and stuff like that like if we could build on to this house i would definitely stay here but <clears throat> i don't know i still i i don't i don't think i would sell this house but i still really want to move to florida I still really want to move to Florida. I've learned to appreciate Dallas more than I've, as I've gotten older, but I still think I want to live in Florida. I'm not even going to lie to you. Okay, this random piece right here. You never told us what was going on. I think in the last like vlog or two vlogs ago or whatever, I was like, oh, I'm going through something. So it's just been kind of hard for me to film lately. And the thing that I'm going through, I don't think i don't really know how to navigate sharing the situation so i'm not going to and it's mostly to shield my kids i don't want me sharing about the experience to negatively impact my kids in any way and it's an ongoing thing and so i'm not going to be sharing I'm not going to be sharing. Not at this time anyways. So that's all I can say. I'm doing better than I was before. And the only thing that's really keeping me, you know, just like at peace is being in my Bible bag. So that's what I've been trying to do is just keep my head down and stay close with God. That's all I can do. The situation is completely out of my control. Okay, somebody said, how do you feel like motherhood has changed you from the girl you once were? Motherhood has definitely calmed me down. It, I have, I have things to lose now. I have, you know, children I cannot um, leave. So I have to be cautious about the, like I just used to be a lot more feisty. Um, like I can't well, when I became a mom I was fresh out of high school so when I was in high school I used to be more feisty like I'm I was always like kind of chill but I could go from like 0 to 100 so fast like I would get in fights like mostly over my friends and stuff like that but cause I never really just like I really never fought a girl over my own drama like I never was just like 
it was usually just like in the defense of other people but i used to be really feisty i used to gossip and all that type of stuff and all that stuff just doesn't interest me anymore i just like don't have time for it yeah i think i just overall i'm more i'm just more chill okay somebody said what has reading the bible taught you and what's the best way to read your bible so I would say I've always been familiar with the Bible, so I can't say there's necessarily like one thing that reading the Bible has specifically taught me right now, other than that it's just like deepened my relationship with God and my understanding of things and the way things work. And then just like, also it's just like a continue, like it's a way to like just continue pouring into myself because I feel like pursuing a relationship with God is something that you like actively have to do or you lose sight of that like nearness and close feeling that you have i read my bible based off of the bible app like the daily scripture and then i'll just kind of like read from there and do my prayer time and my journaling from there and that's kind of like the easiest way for me to navigate it right now because i've tried a lot of other ways but that just seems to like be what works for me and then it also prompts you to like other prayers that come or other verses that come from the bible so you can like read from there but yeah i don't like read one specific like chapter or a book at a time I've kind of just been like bouncing around. So that's been what's working for me. My advice for a teen mom would be that not that you have to lose yourself and your identity, but also you're becoming a mom now. And so that's the priority. You're not going to get to do everything that your friends get to do. And it's going to be like if not frustrating but depressing at times especially when you're at that young age but you know we make choices and if you become a mother you know what i'm saying then that's now the priority but that's not also to say that you'll never be able to do those things that's just not where you are at in your life right now but it doesn't mean you're not going to have the opportunity to get back to doing those things that you want to do later in life and your life's not over your life's not over you're gonna be okay if anything, I feel like kids are always a blessing and things work out the way they're supposed to. So it definitely makes it harder. Everything about being a teen mom is harder than, you know, doing it when you're older and established. I mean, having kids in general at any age, everybody always has their own thing that they're going to struggle with. But I think the thing about being young is that you just don't have the wisdom and you don't know everything about life yet because you're still a kid, <laughs> essentially but you're just gonna take it step by step and day by day and do the best that you can and you're you and your kid you're gonna be you're gonna be straight you know what i'm saying and just enjoy just enjoy motherhood i feel like for the first year of my life i didn't really enjoy motherhood i didn't enjoy my pregnancy when i was in high school because i know everybody was disappointed in me that i was pregnant and so i just felt ashamed but it is what it is and if you decide to keep your baby then just enjoy it don't care about what anybody else says do all of the things you know do all the things that you can do like within with whatever's in your you know whatever is available to you have a gender reveal have a baby shower even if it's not something big even if your parents don't let you do whatever you know what i mean you can do it personally with yourself or like make it cute for yourself but make it fun for yourself enjoy it because you you never know like that might be the only thing that you have even if it's not like you know those are just like my biggest regrets about things that i did when i was like a younger mom like have a maternity shoot you know do the things girl we're almost done i'm doing a twist on this last one because i can't even i don't even have the mental capacity to braid again this style i was not braiding my hair so that it could look cute like or be like you know a sleigh i literally just like be so serious i can't wear my hair like that but i can wear it up and now it's more manageable because i don't have to like brush it and my hair just does well in protective styles like braids because it's not getting like tangly and stuff I also have access to my scalp so i can oil my scalp and i will literally be wearing my hair in a bun in these braids with some baby ears and that is how i like it and this is what grew my hair so this is what i'm doing for a while i do think i might go get some knotless boho braids um soon if i can't keep up with this but for now this is what we're rocking and yeah so there was a lot of other questions that i didn't get to maybe we'll come back to it maybe we'll start doing this on my hair washing days or whenever i 
redo my hair if y'all you know if this is something y'all are interested in just chit chatting and i'm about to do my podcast too and i want my podcast to feel very much like this like it not not necessarily will be all of these different topics but maybe just like one topic that we'll kind of talk about and like dive dive or dig deep into but i'm done with my hair it took me all of about i think i've been talking to y'all for two hours that's insane shout out to the girls who watched the long vlog so also i'm gonna start doing a giveaway on every vlog that i post for an amazon gift card um the dollar amount is yet to be set but i'm gonna be doing it basically as like a scavenger hunt in the vlog so whatever the screen says right here if you made it to this part of the video you have a chance to enter however the rules are described in the video um i don't know exactly how i'm gonna do it but i know i'm gonna leave it right here i was gonna say thank you for watching that's the end of the video but this is a vlog so <laughs> uh it's about 12 o'clock i don't really know what i want to do oh you know what i was supposed to do oh no oh no i was supposed to get my range towed today to a car shop and i was going to do it while i was doing or like place the i'm basically getting it towed through my insurance y'all know it'd be taking forever for roadside assistance to come so i was but i should have been doing it now so they could show up around this time but I forgot I'm about to do it right now so it can get towed to the shop I was gonna go like maybe car shopping but I'm just like I'm not even gonna do all that right now I'm just gonna get it fixed but I found a new shop to take it to anyways that's what I'm about to do right now and then I'm probably about to clean the house it's a hot mess I was originally today I was gonna take Carter back to school shopping which I feel bad because I feel like I've been like putting it off and off and off but he's not going back to school right now anyway so it doesn't matter but I, I have to be here for somebody to tow which is why I ended up staying here i'm trying to look for the address because i was texting the guy here it is anyways i'm about to get my car towed and then i'm about to just clean up the house and since i just talked y'all's ear off i may or may not clean with y'all so i'll talk to i'll catch up with you guys in a little bit let me let me do this good morning when i tell y'all i've started going back to my old 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 skincare ways and my skin is flourishing like that mark i had at the beginning look it's almost gone yeah this is the old me i love it i love it she was flourishing hair was long skin was nice okay we love it anyways good morning it is saturday morning that's my little breakfast for the kids we ended up when was the last time i talked to y'all i don't know we ended up watching flash and ordering some pizza and wings last night y'all know family our fridays is like our movie night we do pizza or pasta. We did pizza and wings yesterday. And yeah, today is gonna be a reset day. I'm gonna try to get the majority of the stuff that I usually do on Sundays done today. So that way I can just kind of like chill tomorrow, go to church, come home, just relax and not really be worried about getting all these different tasks done before Monday. So I'm gonna try to get like my groceries ordered, clean up as much as I can today. So that's what we're gonna be doing this morning. <clears throat> I was gonna do like a little brunch type of vibe, but the kids are like, nah, we don't wanna eat cereal. Cause I was gonna do like cereal for breakfast, something light, and then do brunch around like 10, 30, 11. Cause I wanted to make chicken and waffles, but I'm gonna just do breakfast again for dinner tonight. The kids like breakfast food, so they'll eat it again. But um, what was I gonna say? I was gonna make them some eggs and bacon. But I really think I'm just gonna make them some toast and sausage. Cause then I can save this for later. <laughs> I can save this for later tonight. I mean, I'll have plenty left over. But if I'm gonna do the big shebang, I'm gonna do it at night. If y'all can hear them, they're upstairs. <clears throat> but yeah, we watched Flash again last night. The ratings on Flash were not that good, but I feel like it was pretty good. So it's the fact that I have to be locked and loaded and ready every morning when I come down the stairs. I can't confirm that big spider that was in the garage is dead. Yeah, I had somebody come and get all the boxes out of the garage and like all that stuff from when we moved yesterday. And after he moved all the boxes, it was flipped over dead. I'm gonna insert a picture, but pause and then zoom in. Cause you're not gonna understand how big it is until you zoom in. That motherfucker is huge. Okay. I'm literally so traumatized. I just keep looking at the floor. Cause I swear some mornings when I come down, I'll be looking down at the floor and I'll be like, okay, we're good. No spiders this morning. And then I'll turn around and it'll be like right there. I'm, I can't, I just, but you know what? I gave it to God. 
I'm like, you know, the Bible says that God cares about every little thing that we care about. And so I prayed. I was like, God, please help me get rid of the spiders in my house because I can't take it no more. I can't take it. I'm going crazy. I don't know if they saw their mama dad in the garage. And so they was like, okay, we got to get out of here or what? But so far, so good. All right, we got toast going. Do sausage and fruit. That's like our normal everyday breakfast. I was going to try to eat some oatmeal, but I'm going to do my colon brew first before I eat anything. I can usually make it through the morning without eating anything as long as I like drink water. But that's not necessarily what I'm going for. That's just usually what happens. But I'm gonna take this. You gotta be consistent to see results. I think about it and I really, okay, y'all know I love Loom, right? And it's, it's, a, it's um, you know, aluminum free deodorant. But I'm like, the last couple times, or the last couple of days, I've been like, is that me? I never have underarm like smell, like ever, in years, like forever. And I'm thinking, I'm like, okay, hold on now, hold on now, hold on now, hold on now. What is going on? And y'all, I literally have not taken Chlorofresh since we moved in here. And I'm like, oh, this is what regular body odor is like. Because I always took, I've taken, been taking Chlorofresh for like years. And just recently, like I told you, I haven't been taking my vitamins. I have not been on my, my, my health Zoom, okay? And so yeah, I'm just like, I really gotta back start taking it. Cause I can really, I, I am used to like being able to like seriously like forget to wear deodorant some days, like in the winter time. In the summer, okay, maybe not, maybe can't get away with that. But it really just helps eliminate your body odor. And now I'm sitting here like, oh my God, you musty, crusty, dusty bitch. Hold on, let me spice this on. Anyways, how many of y'all eat rice for breakfast? Because I, I was under the impression that eating rice for breakfast was just like an Asian thing. Like, cause I have a sister, well like, not even just a sister, my sister and my brother, my, oh I have two sisters and a brother who have a Korean mom. And I used to go stay with them in the summer and like you know they always eat rice okay i just had to say that because i know somebody's gonna be like oh my gosh that's so racist like no but um anyways i did not know that's just like a universal thing that like a lot of people eat rice for breakfast and my kids really like rice so i was like i'm gonna start making them rice for breakfast like period i'm really committing next week to cooking and like making full breakfast meals like every day. I really want to commit to that, especially because Carter is about to be, I really have like two weeks until Carter starts kindergarten. And like, I don't even know what I'm going to pack for his lunches because he's like super picky. He will eat the smallest amount of things like for the most part, like he eats chicken wings and noodles, pizza and nuggets. And that's about it. Okay. He likes vegetables and stuff, but like he just won't eat a lot of something that he just doesn't love, if that makes sense. I've been trying to figure out what I'm going to do about that. Because I have no idea. Like he's not going to want to eat sandwiches every day for lunch. Like he can't just eat ramen noodles every day or macaroni or anything like that. So I'm like, maybe if I make dinners, like he can take leftovers for lunch and still have like a full meal. And then of course I'll put like little snacks in there, like chips, fruit snacks, whatever, you know? He gonna have that lunch at school. He gonna have the little lunch with the little, no, I'm gonna literally be a real mom. Like I have three kids, for three kids in deep, but I feel like when your kids go to school, you like really leveled up into like real, like that you got a real child, like you have a real kid. Like little kid, not a toddler, not a baby. I'm a real boy. Okay. I keep getting distracted. You know what's so weird? My kids are just like me. And if I cook the sausage on the stove, 
they won't eat it. But if I make it in the microwave, they eat it. It's the weirdest thing. I don't know why I'm like that about certain things. Like certain things I don't even like cooked in the oven. I will put them in the microwave. I'm dreading doing the laundry today. The girl that usually does our laundry, her name's Martha. I knew I should have sent out the laundry on Thursday. But she was like, I just picked up three big orders and I don't think I'm gonna be able to get to yours this weekend. So how about Monday? I'm like, okay. But in my head, I'm like, no, Martha, because now I gotta go in there. And the only reason why I really am scared, I don't, I'm scared of the spiders. Like there's been, like the majority of the spiders come from like, the garage apparently where the big ass spider was through the laundry room and then right in here in the kitchen and it's very cluttered in there right now and then i have a really hard time speaking up so when the guy was taking all the boxes i had a couple other things that i wanted him to take in there but i just i couldn't i, I couldn't tell him like he grabbed a couple things and then left the rest which not to say he did a bad job but like the boxes were full so he just assumed that i didn't want to throw them away so it wasn't his fault but i just I, I have a problem. So anyways, yeah, he left some of the boxes in there. So I'm like, I still got to move those around and do the, I'm like, mm-mm, mm-mm. Because that's where the big ones be at, the beach. I literally, what? I can what? Okay, I'm going to cut up some strawberries because I'm going to get some more. Some more today. Also, rinse off these blackberries. My kids will eat all of this right here, right now in this one setting. Mm. This is the best thing ever. This like little built-in cutting board here. Oh, oh, we lost the strawberry. You gotta drink this whole thing like time so i need to sit down and focus is anybody else really good about keeping one part of their house clean like my downstairs is always pretty pretty clean upstairs my room is in shambles one gets better one gets better and jelly have a theory or I want to see something. Hold on. First spider has made its appearance. I don't know if they come out and they're like, help me. But they're gonna get sprayed again. You feel me? It's an office. But okay, I'm about to clean up and then I'm gonna talk to y'all a little bit later. We gotta get this thing.